Well guys, welcome back to the kitchen. My name's Rachel and you are at that 1870s homestead. And this is March Canning Madness brought to you by my good friend over at A Good Life Farm, Constance. Thank you for asking me to participate. Today, guys, this video is quite different from anything I've ever done before, but I specifically wanted to address a need that is out there in our greater community. Maybe not people that are actively homesteading now, but they want to learn to can, or they don't have the available space to grow their own garden. Maybe you're searching for opportunities to beef up your food security, this video is for all of you. So what are we doing today? I'm going to go over some back to basics. If you've never canned before, a super easy way to get into it. You don't need a garden. You um, can save yourself a lot of money at the grocery store if that's something that you're interested in. And today we are going to can some bulk purchases of applesauce and oops, diced tomatoes. And I'll talk to you throughout the video on other ways you can get some good practice under your belt, finding food products at the grocery store, at restaurant supply centers. So it's gonna be a really fun one. Let's get into it and we're gonna just dive right in. Before we get into it, let's just talk about some of the basics you're gonna need to get started canning. You're gonna need some jars. Jars come in lots of different sizes. Little four ounce jelly jars, half pints, pints, quarts. Those are gonna be your standard go-to canning jars. Then you can get up to half gallons, gallons for things like pickling. Um, but let me give you a word of advice how I got started. I just put out like a wide Facebook message to say, hey, I'm interested in starting canning. If anyone has any jars sitting around in your house, let me know. I will gladly come and take them off your hands. Um, and then also search like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, look at, um, you know, your Goodwills, your Salvation Armies. I would say, reasonably speaking, jars don't depreciate. Let's just be real. They don't depreciate much. But if you bought a case of jars for some from somebody and it was $10 to $12, still buy it. It's I wouldn't boohoo that. Um, you might every now and then find somebody willing to give them up for cheaper than that. But the fact is, is just because they're used don't necessarily expect a good deal be you know much cheaper than you would buy in the store because it's glass it's lasts forever they just don't depreciate other equipment so today's recipes that I'm going to be sharing with you it's not even a recipe it's just canning um, is water bath canning so I have a big water bath canner here you're gonna find water bath canners in all different looks feels Basically, you need a pot that's gonna be able to cover your jars by two inches of water. So as long as you, you might already have a stock pot in the house, that'll work. You just need a pot that's gonna cover your jars, preferably with something at the bottom that would lift your jars off direct heat. Um, so let me show you what something like that might look like. I have a lot of these laying around the house. They're just little trays that come with canners. Um, but you can also find these. Oftentimes you might see those even at the resale shops and wonder, well, I wonder what that's for. They're for canners. So um, this is a pressure canner. My recommendation for brand new canners is go get yourself a 23 quart Presto canner. That is all you need to get started. It's all I used for years and years and years and it got me by just fine. You're gonna need a funnel. You're gonna need some jar lifters. I have a really old vintage antique one here and then another vintage antique one here. Again, vintage shopping, thrift stores. Um, now these you can get a deal on. I even have a vintage funnel that I use regularly. So don't feel like you have to go and buy a bunch of new things. You can probably find these products 
at thrift shops. You all can get deals on used canners and water bath canners. Those do not hold their value like jars do. Um, and then something to debubble with. I just use a skinny spatula. They make tools specifically for this and they make tools for specifically measuring your headspace. Once you learn eyeballing measurements, you don't really need those extra gadgets. Okay, now let's talk science and all the scary stuff that people will try to scare one another with canning and I don't think it should be a scary thing. You need to study it and you need to learn, like read the books and understand um, Two common phrases that you'll hear is hot pack and cold pack. Hot pack basically means that food is already cooked and hot and you are packing it hot in hot jars, putting it in a hot canner. Um, cold pack is the opposite. It's usually raw product that is going in cold and often in a cold canner and bring, being brought up to temperature together. We now are doing something that's in between that. These products have already been hot packed. What hot pack does is it, um, it does kind of like that science thing that I was talking about. So it's removing any air pockets from the food through that heating and cooking and boiling process that would then cause food to float in the jar. Um, might discolor food in the jar, things like that. So because these have already been hot packed once, I can now cold pack them just fine. And honestly, with applesauce and tomatoes, I would cold pack them anyway, um, because I honestly don't care if they float a little bit in the jar. What other things to be worried about? Oh, when to use a pressure canner versus when to use a water bath canner. Just think very simply, fruits. Fruits are almost always going to be, and pickles, always going to be water bath canning. If it has a high enough acidic um, content, it can be water bathed. A lot of times you're gonna see recipes where, especially when you watch me video, my videos, I add a lot of lemon juice to things and that's to bring up the acidity. Things like meat, beans, and vegetables are almost always going to be pressure canned. So that kind of gives you an idea if if you're thinking, what do I what do I wish I knew how to can or what do I want to get started canning on? Tell you kind of what equipment you might need. Alrighty. Oh, and then lids, don't forget lids. Now if you're buying jars brand new from the store, they are going to come with lids. Lids and rings. But that's kind of like a one-time thing. You're going to need to build up stock if you want to keep this up and continue that of lids in your house. I would say rings, not so much. So avoid the temptation, grab it if that's all that there is, but avoid the temptation of going to the store and buying the box that has rings and lids. You likely already have all the rings your heart can desire once you get started. Um, and then, Start buying them this way where they're just a sleeve of lids. Now these are from Four Jars. We hope to be able to sponsor, um, be an affiliate with them here shortly. If it works out before this video comes, there'll be a link to their shop in our description below. Uh, US made lid company that is very, very high quality. <coughs> but I've also used the Golden Harvest lids, the um, Care lids, <coughs> excuse me, ball lids. Um, I even have some lids that I purchased um, when we had that massive lid shortage off Amazon. Um, so those are backups to my backups. Alrighty, we're gonna get going though. And then let's talk about how to fill your jars, the cleanliness of your jars and all that good stuff. Okay, so I store my jars um, down in the basement after I've washed them in boxes and the boxes have boxes on top of them. So they stay clean. Um, I'm going to just throw these over here 
in my canner. Sorry about that. We're gonna turn the heat on. We're just gonna heat these jars up. Now I'm primarily doing this for the purposes of teaching. I'll be honest, I don't always take this step. If I'm doing, excuse me, cold packing, and I know I've just washed my jars, I don't take this step to heat them. And basically what you're attempting to do is just get them nice and hot for a few minutes to re-sterilize them. So just loading this canner up here. We're gonna put the lid on. So once that comes to boil, I will boil it for two minutes, cut off the heat, and then we'll get started on packing our jars. Okay, one other tip I'm gonna share with you is I took this out of my canner after I sterilized my jars and replaced it with one, one of my flat discs. I find that I can fit way more without this big monstrosity obstruction in my way. So tip I have for you guys just learning over the years I dumped out the hot water, used it for washing dishes, um, the, replaced it now with cold water, and we need to get to filling these jars with these beautiful canned tomatoes and a big old pot of applesauce. This is my antique funnel I was mentioning, just picked it up I think like 65 cents at a store. Um, while I, you, I was heating my jars. I'm not sharing this one with you guys today. It's more advanced with pressure canning, but I also bought a big tub of cream corn to just stock up on and add to my pantry shelves. While I was there excited buying things for you guys, I realized how great some of these deals were. Just like, I can't buy that product for the price at the store. Um, let's see, how much were these tomatoes? The tomatoes for, I'm gonna get just over six pints, were $4.79. Yeah, $4.79 for the tomatoes. And these are just beautiful diced tomatoes. Um, almost always, and I'll, I'll say a caveat when I get there, almost always there's some general um, measurements. Pressure canning, one inch of headspace. Water bath canning, a half an inch of headspace. Jellies and jams, almost a quarter inch of headspace in water bath canning. So, that's right at a half an inch. And we'll move on to the next jar. And I'm just gonna keep filling these up. And then when it gets time to debubbling, I'll show that process to you guys. Like I mentioned, this is just such a fantastic way if you want to start building up your pantry, start building up your personal skills on having some food independence, some security over your food, now, while I bought this at the store, I'm saving myself money by buying in bulk. And you would be um, also not um, as intimidated by the fact of growing your own food, um, getting ahead of rising prices that we know are coming um, just because of conditions, either, you know, the metal supply for the cans or um, you know, droughts that have happened out west with respect to wheat and everything. So it's just a great way to get ahead of all of that. And not now I will tell you things I looked at, not everything is a great deal to buy this way. I remember seeing at Gordon's a can of chicken, just like, you know, canned chicken, but a big one, like a number 10 can like this. It was like 17 bucks. 
I'm like, oh. to me, it wasn't a good deal because I raised my own chickens, <laughs> but maybe it is a good deal. It's just been so long since I bought chicken myself, so I don't know. Um, I would say probably buying potatoes this way and recanning them wouldn't be a great deal. It would be a better deal, deal to just go out and buy like a big 20 pound bag of potatoes and can those yourself. Um, what else was a good deal? This applesauce was a great deal. The applesauce was, where's my applesauce? I don't see it on here. <laughs> applesauce. Uh, maybe not too great of a deal. It was $8, but I guess, you know, when you buy, like for me, when I make applesauce, I'm usually dependent on another farmer to grow the apples. So I often go to farmer's markets and buy bushels. And a bushel of apples for me is like $24, $25. Um, so maybe it is a good deal. And, oh, ketchup. That was another crazy one. What was ketchup? Ketchup, Heinz and brand. Heinz ketchup in a 10 gallon jar was $6.79. And right above it was the, you know, pint size individual jar. And that was like two, two bucks, over two bucks. And I'm just like, what? So I just went, heck yeah, I'm buying that just because it was a good deal. And we can just have it put up or I can can it up and share it with the kids. And um, so just making you guys, letting you know that there's other ways, right? You do not have to just grow a garden to get started canning. Um, there's lots of ways to get into it, get some practice under your belt and um, or maybe you never will have even have the capability to can and you just want the ability to build up your pantry without paying crazy prices. This is a great way to do that. All right, I think I'm getting close. I figured out by doing my corn ahead of time that each can will do right at a pint and a half. And that allows me the opportunity to share with you that pints and pints and a half you can for the exact same time. Um, no difference on timing there. Okay, I might not quite get my my half pint since these are getting filled a little higher. Mmm, yummy applesauce. Now guys, just avoid the comments that this is not organic because not everybody can afford organic, okay? And you guys know I grow and preserve all my own, own organic food. But this video is not about that. This video is about people that want to learn to grow or preserve their own food. And maybe they're on a budget, maybe they're on a small scale, maybe they don't have, they're in a food desert where they live and there is no source of organic foods. How can they still do that and um, have some control over um, the food security for their family? This is the way to do that. And in those times, you know, organic's nice to have, but it's not, it's not keeping your family alive. Um, so let's just try to avoid those comments and um, let people just learn how to can and put up food. All right, so I'm gonna continue to fill my applesauce jars. That one's a little too full. And um, we'll come back and we'll talk about the deep bubbling, putting the lids on, getting them all loaded in the canner and fun stuff like that. Now let's talk deep bubbling. Can you guys see those bubbles in there? I hope that shows up. So there's some bubbles. And you kind of just want to do your best to get those up to the surface. And you do that by sliding your deep bubbling tool, whatever you have on hand, and you can see the bubbles rising to the top, down all the sides. And then I kind of just do a cross through the middle. So then I'll just put my finger or my spoon in there and kind of just do an X in the middle. 
And then another tip is if you're still seeing some bubbles, just tap and then I wiggle it, tap, wiggle, tap, wiggle. But do it on um, a pad, don't do it directly on your counter. So I'm gonna debubble all the jars and then we'll come back and we'll wipe and clean our rims. This is another reason why you debubble is because actually there might be something holding a good air pocket in there between all the goodness and you'll actually see your head level drop. So I'm just gonna add some more tomatoes to bring my level back up to about a quarter inch of headspace, or excuse me, half inch of headspace. All right, we'll do the same thing with our applesauce. Stuff like this a little bit trickier to really get all the bubbles out. You just gotta do your best. That's where I like the banging method. Get those bubbles up to the top. This is what I mean by you will have more rings than you know what to do with when you get canning. I have bags and bags of rings. So what I have with me is just some vinegar. Um, you could use vinegar, you could use hot water, and you just wanna wipe the rims of your jars to get any of that food product off of it that might have spilled or accidentally got wiped on as you were filling your jars and debubbling all that good stuff. Um, and what that's gonna do is it will help um, prevent anything being on the lids that would prevent you from getting a good seal. So we're just gonna do that to all of our jars, get them nice and clean. Okay, now you will want to wash your lids if you're a big time rule follower and I wanna teach you, wash your lids, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't. I don't, that's just the truth of the matter. Um, so I'm gonna put my lids on and then we're gonna talk about finger tight. What a tricky phrase to learn when you're just canning. Okay, lid is on, centered, ring is on, and now that's as far as I could do it with just flicking it. Now I'm just gonna go till I can't do any more. I'm not gonna grip it and twist it, just till it gets finger tight. That is the easiest way for me to explain it. So, whee! now I can't do it anymore with my finger, finger tight. All right. Another tip for you, if you think that you would be somebody like me who forgets to label their jars when they come out of the canner, if you use permanent marker before you even put them in the canner, that doesn't come off and your lids will be pre-labeled for you when they come out and you won't have to remember to do that after the fact. It is okay to use rusty lids, don't let that um, worry you over a while um, after a while they'll be, get too rusty to use but if there's just a little dab of rust that's okay um, that happens to us a lot of times because we do have to put vinegar in our canner which I will show you later so with the applesauce I ended up getting six and a half pints so that's exciting more food for the grandbabies. All right, and you are gonna see that this is a store-bought jar. I don't know if you guys can tell that. Still has a little bit of the label on it. Completely okay. Mayonnaise jars, store-bought pasta jars. Um, they're all very good quality glass under even much higher heat than you could ever get your canner at home. So we will load these up. And same thing, just finger tight on the applesauce. All of your jars, whether you're pressure canning, just finger tight.
You don't want to be too soft and that you let a lot of your food out, um, you know, especially like making um, liquids, things like that, you could easily have some loss. So um, don't be too gentle with it, but just enough. All right. I have one other thing I'm gonna can, and um, just this is for the purposes of teaching how to can, ways to go about stocking your pantry outside of the norms. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ladle up. Don't do that. It's okay. It's okay, I promise. I'm gonna go ahead and ladle up my big thing of Heinz ketchup so I can get a full canner load of tomato products and we'll do our applesauce products separately because these are same time frame. So let me get those going and we'll be meet back at the canner. Got all my ketchup jarred up. Getting ready to get all of these loaded in the canner for you guys and for me of course and we will talk about um, bringing things up to uh, boiling temperature together so we can get them all canned up. Ooh, gonna be tricky. Let's see. Mm, not all gonna fit. All right, put that lid on. Now there is a ton of equipment on the market for canning. I mentioned the two basics at the beginning of the video. The standard water bath canner, they all look like this for the most part, but they come in a variety of shapes, metals, um, size and scale. Um, I have a big, huge Amish one that sits on both eyes. And I have a steam canner here. Um, a steam canner is used like a water bath canner and it will, um, it's, I think it's going to be really helpful for anyone that has limitations with respect to lifting weight. It uses far less water um, and, okay, so I got steam canner going, let's, all right, bring both of these up to boil. And once they're up to boil, let's come back together and talk about the next steps. Okay, my applesauce is up to boiling pressure, not pressure, but boiling steam level. It has this nice little indicator on it to let you know when it's ready. These will can for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna set my oven timer for this one. 20 minutes going on this one, that's what you're waiting for. So this guy has a lot of water in it, so it's gonna take a long time to bring this one up to boil. It's still working on it, not quite there yet. Once that's up to boil, I'm going to set the timer for, the timer for the diced tomatoes is, um, for canning those is 30 minutes, and for the ketchup is 15 minutes. Now, you're gonna do your own research and you're gonna get comfortable with how you feel canning things with different temperatures. My method is for water bath especially, if I'm not concerned about overcooking something, I'm not over concerned about the ketchup, I'm just gonna let the ketchup go the full duration as the diced tomatoes, 30 minutes for both of them. And then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna talk about Okay, the timer's done, what do I do next? Okay, when your timer goes off, just cut your eye off. Let them sit here five to 10 minutes till you hear that boiling completely stop and it's safe to lift the lid. Ooh, my steam canner. Never had this issue. This is my first time using my steam canner. It definitely pulled my Look what it did with my labels. Oh, wow. Just uh, bled some of the ink. Alrighty. They look pretty. Yes. Applesauce for the win. Now, as you pull out your jars, just space them like an inch apart so that they can cool evenly. 
you know, don't have your jars touching. And you're just gonna let them sit here for, I usually just let them sit overnight till the morning um, or the next chance I get to put, put them away. And then I'm going to take the rings off. Don't store your canned goods with your rings on it. The answer is, I know you're asking why, if you're new to canning, because you want a failed seal to show itself. And if the ring is on there, it might hide a failed seal. Um, so if a seal fails, you're gonna know it because oxygen's gonna be able to get in there, mold's gonna form, and it's gonna tell you, you got a bad seal. And if that lid was on there, it's going to keep that, um, or the ring is on there, it's gonna keep that lid down tight and potentially um, hide a failed seal on you. Okay. Let's look at how our ketchup and diced tomatoes did. Pulling all of our ketchups out. Super fun. If there is water on top of your jars, it'll evaporate, leave it alone. You just don't want to fool with your jars once they come out. And notice I have heavy duty placemats down. That's what I use. You could use a towel, dish cloths. You just don't want it to set your jars directly on your countertop. Set them on a, um, a nice thick towel of some kind. These, your jars will be super, super hot. Sorry, one second. I don't want to finish this video before I forget to remind you guys to go check the playlist linked in the description below to the March Madness canning marathon that Constance is putting on over at A Good Life Farm. Please go check out her channel. Subscribe if you're not already. Amazing recipes, amazing canning videos. You don't want to miss her channel at all. And, um, all the content creators go watch their videos leave a comment Constance is going to be doing a giveaway at the end of the month I didn't myself don't even know what it is so it's going to be a surprise for all of us um, but everything canned uh, my corn's even done so I'm going to get you guys back and wrap up this video oh four jar lids 10% off we got our discount code it will be linked in the description as well and they worked amazing. Not a single lid failure. I honestly think that they actually, the seal, like the concave is like pulled down even stronger than I've ever realized before in water bath canning. So really neat to see that. Okay, how about that? Now I just gotta get all my corn canned up and I'm gonna be done for the day. But I hope you guys are inspired. Again, this is to my friends out there that say, Rachel, I wanna learn to can. I'm so inspired by you being able to put up food for yourself and your family. I don't have a garden or I just live in a small apartment. This is a great way to one, get practice. Get practice before you go out there. And if this is your first garden season, practice canning, get comfortable with your equipment. And for those that just don't have the opportunity to source um, either from your own land or from anyone around you, um, food, where how you can bulk up your pantry buying bulk products in the store. So hope it was helpful. Hopefully it gets you going on your canning journey. And I look forward to your comments down in the comment section below. And I'll talk to you guys on the next video.